Hello, my name is Rebecca Slynn and welcome to this workshop on Generative Artificial Intelligence for English Language Teaching. I'm currently a student on the MA Applied Linguistics and English Language Teaching programme at King's College London and I delivered this workshop to master's students on the language programmes at King's College on the 23rd of April 2024. All of the participants in the workshop are in-service or pre-service language teachers. So at first I made a Padlet board where people could post what they already know or tools that they already know that use AI. Let's have a look at their responses now. So we can see that the teachers in the workshop, they've all heard of ChatGBT and Copilot, but there are some specific examples which are made for teachers like Quizlet for making quizzes in classes and WordWall, which can create different activities. And Quillbot is used for paraphrasing. So there's quite a few specific AI tools as well as the more general generative AI tools there. This workshop covers the generative AI tools and then how we can use them to support the students' skills in English language learning, like reading, writing, speaking and listening. And finally, how as teachers we can use them to help us with our planning. The four generative AI tools that we used in the workshop were all free versions and we used ChatGPT 3.5. Well, now this is already out of date because you can have some free access to ChatGPT 4.0 and Microsoft's Copilot. And if you're a student at King's College London, you'll have access to the institutional version of this. Google's Gemini and Anthropic's Claude. There's two important points about these AI tools. The first one is that you should use all of them with the different prompts that we go through in the workshop and see how the responses are different and which one you prefer or which one is more useful for different tasks. So experiment with those. And the second one is as teachers, we're dealing with say students writing or marking and we need to be careful if we input anything from students into an AI tool they are the owners of their writing so we can't post it online or input it into something without their permission one of the important things to know is how to turn off the setting that is letting the ai tools use the data that you input for training because we still don't know 100 percent exactly what it means when they use the data for training or how it might come out to other users. So we can actually change the settings for these. So I'll show you how to do that now. For ChatGPT, the way to turn off your data being used for training is to click on your profile icon and click settings. Then data controls and improve the model for everyone. You need to turn this off. So you can toggle this switch here to turn it off. For Gemini, to turn off the data collection, click on activity. And then they will have an option here for Google Apps activity. Mine is turned off, but if you click the icon here, you can turn it on or off. So if yours is on, you can turn it off from here. In Copilot, we have institutional access. So you can see this green icon at the top offers commercial data protection. So this will not save your data. However, it still warns us to be careful if we're putting in any personal or private or organizational information. The first activity we looked at were reading and writing activities. This was suggested by Sharples in his 2023 article. So for these games, you're using ChatGPT directly with a student and they're interacting with it to play a game. The first thing you need to do is input a prompt to set the rules of the game and then the students can interact with them. Now, these aren't always perfect and sometimes they might use language that's a bit too difficult for the students level or they might not follow the rules very well. But let's try it out together and see how it does. We're entering our prompt into ChatGPT. Once upon a time, there's a small village by the sea in the village lived a small girl named Emma. Emma loved to play by the water every day. One day, a fish started talking to Emma. The fish said, Hello, Emma, I need your help. Ah, said Emma, shocked by the fish. The fish said, 
Don't be scared. I am a magic fish. What is your magic power? said Emma. I can grant one wish to anyone who helps me, the fish replied. What do I need to do? asked Emma. You need to find a golden shell hidden in the sand, the fish explained. Emma searched for days and nights, looking for the shell. Finally, one morning, she saw something shiny buried in the sand. It was the golden shell. Excited, Emma picked up the golden shell and ran back to the fish. The fish happily accepted the shell. Thank you, Emma, said the fish. Now make your wish. I wish you would turn into a human so you could be my friend. With a splash of magic, the fish transformed into a boy named Finn. The end. And you can see ChatGPT's output the whole story for us when we type in the end, just like we programmed it. And it gives us some feedback. The next activity is using the generative AI tool in the same way as someone to interact with directly. And this activity is a Socratic opponent, which means that you're going to say an opinion or an argument and they're going to respond with a counterpoint. And this can be really useful for developing essay writing and critical thinking skills, um, particularly with IELTS writing task two, where you're expected to show strengths and weaknesses or arguments for and against. So what you can do is input the prompt and then see how the AI does with responding to the arguments. And this one again was recommended by Sharples in his 2023 article. So we've inputted the initial prompt and ChatGPT has given us an opinion that preserving local languages is really important and so is learning English. We can counter that by uh, giving an opposing opinion that it's not compatible and that you need to focus on only English. ChatGPT acknowledges our response, but then counters that with the positives of learning multiple languages. We're responding again, saying that it might be difficult for those who are not talented at learning languages. It acknowledges it again, and then it explains that motivation and other aspects are important for second language acquisition, and so on. The next activity is using a different AI service called Poe AI, and this can make a writing tutor bot or any kind of bot for kind of customized AI interaction. This is good because in the previous activities, we had to set the rules of the game or what we wanted chat GPT or the AI tool to do by initially prompting it with something. Whereas this overcomes that by being able to input that default prompt into the bots programming and then students can use it straight away to practice their essay writing. I demonstrate how to create a custom bot in my teacher training video that is in the members area on the King's College London Digital ELT Special Interest Group website. If you are a previous member or staff in the MA Languages programmes, you can get access to that and go through step by step. And if you'd like to try out the writing tutor that I've created, you can use the link below. Or if you'd like to have a go at setting up your own, this is a prompt that I've adapted from Ohashi's 2024 presentation about using PoAI for academic writing. Another activity that we can do is picture generation. And this one is really exciting and engaging and students really, really enjoy this. And you might be thinking, how does picture generation help with writing? So with the AI tool, you have to prompt it to generate an image, but then you need to describe it in as much detail as possible if you want to get a specific image. So it's a bit of trial and error. So students can try to generate an image of, say, their favorite book. But then if they don't put in certain details, the color will be wrong or the size of the characters or the background details. So then they'll have to reprompt it again, adding in the missing information. And there's lots of possibilities with this. So you can give them a picture and have them memorize it and then take the picture away and then they have to write the description and then whichever group gets the closest to the original is the winner. You can do these picture generations for free in Microsoft Copilot, Crayon or Adobe Firefly. And I believe that since I made this workshop, ChatGPT 4.0 does have some picture generation ability, but we'll have to check on that. The activity I did in the workshop was present the participants with this photograph 
and I asked them to write a description to generate as close to possible as they could. So let's have a look at how everyone did. These are the examples that the participants in the workshop created. So the original photo is here. And then you can see that people have had relative success. So there's good descriptions of the coat and the graffiti in this one. There's a good description of that skeleton that's on the left side and the child in the middle. This one has a more realistic description. And this one, it's got the police officer, but it's not exactly right. It's more like an army person. So you can tell the details have come through in different ways in the different prompts and the way people have done it. Like here, it's a person with a skeleton. So you can see how it can really change the output based on how you describe it. Another way to use generative AI for writing is in part of the journal writing process. So you write in your target language, say English, and then you copy and paste your finished journal entry into DeepL. DeepL is using AI to translate, and I believe it's using generative AI, not just the general AI like um, Google Translate is. And then you can translate the language into your first language or your more dominant language. And when you notice some issues, then you can go back to your original and try and change it to fix it. And then I would recommend keeping a copy of this so that you can kind of keep a journal of your original writing and then the changes that you made. This was something that was also demonstrated by Louise Ohashi in her 2024 presentation. And I've done a quick demonstration here of my writing in Japanese. And then I noticed, oh, it said I missed my favorite snack. That doesn't quite make sense in English. And it's put a comma there rather than connecting the sentence. So I must have done something wrong. So I went back and I changed it. And then you can see now that the English makes sense. It says, oh, I'm sad and because I didn't eat it. And I'll get up early tomorrow and go. So I fixed some errors by looking at the different translations and then going back to the original. One way that we can use ChatGPT for speaking practice is on the app on your phone or tablet, you can turn on a speaking assistant and this will respond very naturally. And I think if you've seen the advertisements for ChatGPT 4.0, it's becoming really, really authentic and it's like having a real conversation. And it's really useful for practicing in a kind of safe space and there's no one judging you. So it's really good for students. One of the other things is that you can input certain things to practice before pressing the uh, chat button. So, for example, if you're practicing interview questions, you can input those by text and then you can say, now let's talk about it. And then you turn on the chat function and say, OK, now let's start the interview. And it's also multilingual. So if you get stuck, you can change language and it will detect it automatically. This is really, really cool. So I'll do a demonstration and show you how it works. Now let's try and use ChatGPT to do some speaking practice. I've got some interview questions here and I'll send those to ChatGPT. And when we're ready to do an audio conversation, we can press this headphone icon at the bottom there. Hi ChatGPT, let's start the interview. Great, so let's dive into our first question. How do you believe AI could be useful for teachers? It can definitely make lesson plans and worksheets for us. That's a great point. AI can indeed assist in creating personalized lesson plans and worksheets tailored to students' needs. How do you think this could benefit teachers and students in the classroom? Um, uh, Take your time. Feel free to share your thoughts whenever you're ready. Ah, uh, yeah, it can help us to prepare really quickly and efficiently. Absolutely. 
AI's ability to quickly generate lesson plans and materials can save teachers valuable time, allowing them to focus more on delivering quality instruction and providing individualized support to students. What other ways do you think AI could assist teachers in their roles? Okay, ChatGPT, that's enough. Let's stop the interview. And can you give me some feedback on my answers? Sure. Your responses were clear and highlighted the efficiency and time-saving benefits of AI in lesson planning. You effectively pointed out the practical advantages without getting too technical. If you want, I can provide more detailed feedback on specific areas you'd like to improve. Finally, let's look at how as teachers, the AI tools can help us. So for lesson planning, ChatGPT does a really good job. Try it out with Copilot, Gemini and Claude as well. But you can prompt it with your specifications and it will come up with different ideas for activities and um, certain worksheets or question and answers. There's some other prompts here about developing materials. So creating vocabulary tests, discussion questions, reading comprehensions, and it can also suggest listening activities, even though it can't give you the actual audio. So try them out and see what you think. The final part was some apps that are specific to helping teachers make presentations or lesson plans. So there's Schemely and Gamma for presentations and websites. Schemely is actually designed for teachers. So this comes up with quite a lot of different resources that might be helpful. We'll have a look at that one. So for Schemely, we can input a prompt here and it will generate a lesson plan based on the topic that we put. So if I'm put in here, a lesson for university students on academic writing about the climate crisis and click generate, we can choose the age group and then the language. And if we have any particular curriculum, we can input that here, like it's got the AQA GCSE exam board for, as an example there. So we we'll press create. Here you can see now we've got a lesson plan. It's generated some key vocabulary for us and we can generate Quizlet flashcards directly from here by clicking that button. It's also given us a relevant YouTube video where we can generate a quiz from that. It's got summary of the content, the activities, so the starters, main activities and the group activity. We can generate slides from here, generate an assessment quiz, and it's got some suggestions for differentiation, which means to change the lesson based on the levels and abilities of the students. And Gamma is more general for making presentations from a prompt or a document. So let's have a go at doing the same lesson plan, but now with Gamma. So let's try to generate a lesson plan. Once we put in our instructions, we can change the language and then click generate. We can see here that it's got some content and then some activities for student writing practice, which looks good. We can change any settings and then click continue. We choose the design of the presentation and then we can generate it and it will start to generate in real time as we're watching. We can see the content is coming up and those are the things that we would be teaching in the class. And then there's brainstorming, some drafting and revising for writing, how for students, how to give feedback and presenting their work. So this is not going to necessarily be perfect for teaching straight away, but it's much, much quicker to generate it and then edit and adapt it to your context than it would be to create it all from scratch yourself. So this is a really big time saver for those who are using presentations in their classes. Finally, the useful resource I would recommend is that there's an AI for that.com. You can have a look here for all of the customized or specific tools that are running on ChatGPT and other generative AI underneath. And there's been a lot of development and people trying to make different products. So try them out and see what you think. Here are the references that I've used and some recommendations for further reading, which you'll be able to access uh, from the slides. Thank you very much. And I hope that this was useful and this was helpful for you.